Not something I've ever seen in 40 <laughs> years. I've never seen that. Of course, I'm Frank Natrain. This got some. Today, we're going on an adventure. I was getting all hyped up, put the Nova together, we got the motor assembled, all that. I realized something about this trans. Now, as I told you guys before, the trans that was in the car with my buddies, really good friend, so good friend, he's like, hey, I've got this other trans you can have. So he gave me this one, which we saw a trans break, but it's got a shallow pan, and then I realized it's got 182 written on it. From a distance, that kind of looks like 180, but it's really 182. 182 is the factory V6 gear set for a power glide and probably not going to work for what we have going on here. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to work and I'm not saying that I've never done stuff like this before where we just take it, throw it in, and hope for the best, but it's going to rain this weekend at Darlington. There's not going to be any racing. So instead of rushing and trying to put something together to make a race, we've got some better plans that may include bright sunny florida sick week we might go down for that i don't know but i found local transmission builder power glide guy who says he's got 180 gear sets in stock he's got clutches he's got everything we need so we're going to take this thing down there today and probably drop it off because the way i'm thinking if we drop it off now talk to him make sure everything is good to go we can go to sick week and then we can come back and pick this thing up so let's take this thing down it's in maryland it's like an hour and a half away little road trip not a big one but we got to get this thing out of here oh, and built. Oh, I did put turbo spline input shaft in there too, but we still need a little more. Can almost go racing. I would love to go racing. The race <laughs> we were supposed to go to this weekend got canceled for rain. Got her. Put her on the wagon and we'll run her in here. All right. Wishful. Yeah, it would be nice, right? Tell you what I know about it. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Already you know something? <laughs> Normally there would be a date on there, BTE, and it would have the date. Yeah, there's a line. Maybe but they, it's impossible, but nah. I'll show you over here. These are brand new BTEs. Okay. And that's exactly what you have, basically. Now, I have a question. Mine, when it came in the package, had a copper mm -hmm. like ring around it. Brass ring, like or a brass. wedding band. Yeah, like a wedding band. What is that for? That goes in the gear set. Okay. And it slides on this. Sometimes it doesn't. I have to take that in the sand or sometimes. And get it down. It gets a little edge on it. Right. And then it won't go on. Gotcha. But, but that's inside of the drum. Okay. This is a $140 shaft. Gotcha. So that's good. Yeah, that one's brand new. I bought it now, a little while back. It may not be BT because everybody copies somebody. Down. Everybody does the but same. But this is their patent. TCI is straight. Trans specialties, this has not got anything. It's got a hole drilled here, hole drilled here and that lets the fluid get through. Oh, okay, yeah. Different ways, different people. Yeah, diff yeah. This design here works, in my opinion, really good. Before I did this, when you do the end play on this, right. depending if it has a bearing or a bushing on the pump. Okay. You hear that? Yeah. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it move. Okay. That should be seven or eight thousandths with a bearing which it doesn't have I'm sure right with a bushing it can be 15 to 20 okay that's probably that probably looks about right for it could be 30 but uh, it won't hurt anything yeah. but there are shims to to fix that yes when I put it back together I will shim it properly yeah now easiest thing to do here pull the pump out that that's the real old the old style had bolts like that, oh, nine yeah. sixteenths, and they had little O-rings on them. And the newer stuff had half-inch bolts. Let's see. Power glide. Right. Yeah, that's another difference that you may see every now and then. Some of them will have. They won't say power glide here. Yeah. They're just smooth. 
They have a steel a steel vent like this. Right. This is a real old one. Yeah. The newer style has a nylon vent there. All right. Not a big deal, but no. That's no, probably uh, sixty-two or three transmission. Really? That could be could have been originally. Yeah. It's cool that they hang around that long. Oh yeah. <laughs> Most time I don't use this style bolt because I like the other ones better. They got like a little washer made on them. Yeah. These were the first design. Now, rather not, they, the new bolts may were better or not, but that's, yeah, right. you know how that goes. Yeah. They probably were cheaper. I have a tool up here for every little thing. Right. Most of the time, they don't stray far. Well, when this is all you do, it's, it becomes easy <laughs> knowing exactly what you need when you're gonna need I have it. people say, I want to learn how to do it. I said, come on down, yeah. I'll show you. And then after I get done, they say, it's cheaper, let's bring it to you. <laughs> I don't do this for a living. I yeah, but you've come it. highly recommended. I do it for fun, and I like to meet the people. Yeah. And of course, the racing. And it doesn't, doesn't make me a little racing money. That's what it's all about. I worked 30 years at Acme. Okay. And retired from there in 98. And I've worked 25 years at Napa. And I'm still there. Yeah, but you actually know what parts we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing this about 40 years ago. Okay. Oh, man, you got the puller and everything. Yeah, this is an axle puller. Made this little contraption on the end. To thread into the pump? Yeah. See that little washer? Yeah. That, that goes on the other style bolt, but you had the old style. But that's the washer that goes on the new style bolt. Mm. Which, not a big deal. Somebody just didn't have the O-rings that go on those other bolts. I know I did bolts with a O-ring when I did the, when I put a bell on my 400. Mm -hmm. And those things were a pain in the butt. You cut it off and put the ultra bell on it? Yeah, well, I cracked it because it was the first time, the first pass we made on the car on the street. And I let go of the button. It went immediately into a wheelie then broke the ring gear, came slamming down, cracked the bell housing, broke the mm -hmm. ring. Oh, it was, it was a good time. It's probably the best 60 foot I've ever had on the street, but it didn't last very long. It didn't last long. I will tell you, if you break the case on a power glide, it usually cracks right from there and goes around. Yeah. If it does that, either you have rubber motor mounts on the motor or something like that, Yeah. that won't work. With yeah. a trans brake, it won't. No, I've got all my motors are solid mounting. Now then, it's supposed to come out. <laughs> and I'm not going to cut anybody down that may have built this, but I'll tell, oh. you, I'll tell you what they should or shouldn't. Yeah, I think this one, this one was just something that was bought somewhere along the line, so I think it was good for somebody for what they were doing but <laughs> definitely needs more for what we're trying to do okay this is your high gear drum we've never seen that before somebody's drilled all these holes in there to let the fluid out i guess it's not uh, not something i've ever seen in 40 <laughs> years i've never seen that of course i bring the trans it's got some and i have no idea this drum is something i've never seen before good, see how that good. is yeah. I've never seen one like that. It usually goes all the way to the end. To the edge. And all these holes here, I've never seen. We should have just put it in. That's ma It's magical. We didn't even know it. <laughs> I've never, in 30 years, I've never seen that. Really? This is the this is the band, low gear band. It looks good, but it's a bone stock one. Right. Which I use Kevlar ones most time. Yeah. But that's, I mean, it looks like brand new, but it looks like a stock one. They make red alpha line. They make all kinds. Now, judging, assuming this doesn't have a speedometer, that should come right out. That is a six cylinder, 182. Kind of a strange one though. I don't know what that says. Uh, Fontana? Looks like. May have been a customer's name or something. They've cut this off to lighten it. But that's a bone stop 182. That's what comes in a paraglide. Okay. The only thing they've done different here is they've cut that off, which lightens it. Right. 
Let me show you. Yeah. All right, this is a 176 gear set. Right. You see the see the carrier. You see six gears. One, two, three, four, all the way around. Okay. You see this ring gear? Yeah. That's what this is. Yeah. Now that's a that's a good carrier with a good yeah. output to hold nine yards. All right. This this is a six cylinder one, which is what you've got here. Right. But, oh yeah, yeah. So they've machined it down considerable. They've cut a little bit of, little bit of both sides, I believe. And that's just, or, to, just to make it lighter. Yes, and it is considerably lighter. Oh yeah. I mean, I get it. It looks like they did some work to try to make it yes. lighter and work a little better. Somebody did quite a bit to. But but that's the thing. Why would you do quite a bit to a 182 gear set? the question well it would have made it lighter it would have made it lighter and they they uh in, in the day they did that yeah. but it still would hold about 500 horsepower looking looking for every hour um, now that's going to be your reverse clutches okay and we're looking for a clearance of 80 thousand in there generally All with right. a trans brake we'll check that and if the clutches look good, you need a minimum of five. And that's probably what's in there. All right, so it's either really old, like they did this a long time ago before they had better stuff. And we're uh, that's possible. I'm curious to see. I've never seen anything like that before. With them all drilled out. And the crucial part of this is the gear that's pressed here. Right. Sometimes you spot weld that and make sure it doesn't come loose. Okay. Which it's okay. But see, there's usually a clutch against this. Well, a clutch wouldn't work against all that. Right. So they put a metal last, which is the same thing I do. Okay. Now, there's your wedding band. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where it is. You can't use the stock one of these. This has been replaced. This is aluminum. Okay. And I use the steel ones up there, but it's un they're unbreakable. This is supposed to be, sort of. Allegedly. But aluminum is fine, it's lighter. Yeah. But it gal it galls up real bad right here where the teeth go. If you run it, you know, right. a couple of years, you would be able to see it. Yeah. But as long as it's not galled up, great. Yeah. That's fine. At least they fixed this. Right. That would be the weakest link of a power glide right there. Now, minimum. Remember me telling you about five or six clutches? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Black marks. That's been... That's been used. Smoked. Black. Black. See that black line? Yeah. Well, that's what that was. Just a little bit there. A little bit there. A little bit there. They all got just a smidgen. Right. And that one, just one side. Yeah. <laughs> that happens, but... We only got four, we got five. Counting four. That's all came out of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not enough. That's not gonna be enough. On a stock power glide, they come with maybe four. Right. And on a, a good, the one with the V8, yeah. they would have at least five. At least five. And, I, and Possibly it? six, but factory didn't do many with six. Right, and then I think to get into like eight or 10, you have to switch the drum out. Right? I can get eight in there, in okay. that stock drum. Now, maybe not this one, because they're different too. Right. You can get seven or eight in a stock drum, but you've got to use the thin ones, okay. which is what I do. Yeah. And then if you want 10 pack, you got to buy an aftermarket okay. Sonex, drum. and that's 500 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't, you don't need it. Right. From what I see here, this isn't enough. No, that's not going to work. And they're not in the greatest of shape. No. Not bad. They wouldn't have slipped. No. But they got hot at some point. That's where the black marks came from. Right. And we're already tearing it apart and opening it, so but we might as well get it right. We're trying to see what you got here. Yeah. Now, Look at that right there. Reverse-wise, uh -huh. we can't check much on reverse until we take it all the way apart. Blow it all the way out. Yeah. And he doesn't have a whole lot of pressure because a lot of pressure takes power. Right. I think that you've had this panel. No. Bolts are just finger tight. <laughs> no. Somebody has. Somebody has, not me. <laughs> I just want to get this part over the bucket. All right, so I'm... Yeah, that's a 
a long, long ways from being red. Yeah. And you see what you got. That's not bad. You'll get black stuff in the pan. Now, my and if question, it's got metallic in it, right? That's usually out of torque converter. Okay. This is old school too. They they this is a, they have a new and improved one of these. Not that it matters. They worked. Right. I guess maybe they broke off or something. The ones they have are just one piece. This is oh, okay. Two. Multiple. Now it when it's fine, but when it's black like that, is that clutch material? Yeah. yeah. And the clutches got hot. And the fluid got burned. Yeah, and there's some metal chunks in there too. You're gonna get, normally you'll have a little metallic in there. When it's so deep you can take a spoon and scrape it, then it's right. got a torque converter that's wasted. Oh, there like, should be a spring underneath. This little plunger, when we get it out, right. there's a spring that should be pushing that out right now. Right, out. And Unless it's a pro tree it. brake. A pro tree brake doesn't have a spring, but you have to put it in reverse and push the trans brake button right. to back it up. It's probably a pro brake then. It's a compu flow valve body, it should have a spring. Okay. Should have. Unless. It's a good thing we didn't just throw this thing. Yeah, in oh, there. this wouldn't have run. Yeah, we'd, it'd have been broke immediately. Now, let me rephrase this. If it's a pro brake, it wouldn't have a spring. This might be a pro brake because yeah. that's a different solenoid. The solenoid for the regular ones with the spring, right. this part here, it's hollowed out and it goes, the plunger goes inside of it. And, and the spring is so that way you don't have to push the button. On a pro brake, you're going to have to push the button to yeah. back up and you won't have any reverse unless you push the button. Yeah, that's that's how all my cars have been. But yeah. we're, we're actually going to do a new thing now where because it's, we're controlling it through the Holly ECU. So I'm going to put a shift position sensor on, mm -hmm. on the shifter. And then Holly will automatically engage the reverse when it sees that it's in reverse, so I don't have to hold the button. This is a winter shifter lever. That's the only shifter that that lever will work with. Yeah, well, I don't have one of those. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the only one with a C like that. Yeah, I was, I was looking because I was like, that doesn't look like any shift lever I've ever used before. It only goes to winters. I'll put a multi-fit one in there. It's got four holes and you, it, it'll work with right. it. That's tight. Oh yeah, what was that? Ugh, yeah. They only need to be about 20 foot pounds. That looks a little more than one. But, didn't bring the bolts off. Nope. It's fine. <laughs> something on this get it out okay it is a double dump normally an ATI one just has this one hole here okay this one also has one here that means it does reverse fluid out of that one and that one normally a brake just has this one okay but a double dump one, and that's basically what that is. I didn't know ATI even made that. And here's where you check your clearance, right here. Oh, okay, yeah. That's where we want about, I keep my feeler gauge set. This is this is about 80. About 80. That's a, oh. you can do, you can do 80 to 100. You can even do 120 and it'll work. That's probably about 100. But when it gets hot, you push the trans brake button and you see a car back up. Yeah. That's why. Too much clearance and it slams in. When you push the button, it slams it in reverse. So that's, I used to have a problem with that where like sometimes what I would stage, I would get to the second bulb and apply the trans brake and the car would roll backwards. It would yeah. go back, and I would sometimes take the top bulb out, yeah, and you're take... screwed. But it should never back up. Right. If it backs up, you got low pressure, you got too much clearance in reverse, and it slams in and jerks her back. Gotcha. Power glides should never back up. Okay. The last thing, let's see how many reverse clutches they did. See, this is where somebody might have did this with it upside down. Right. Out. There, there it is. Then you can pull her out. 
trick of the trade. You yeah. put them where they. Right where you can get it. It's out. all for the next time you take it apart. I know. Right. That's one thing I can do, and I can tell somebody's been in a transmission that I did. Because you can tell that's where that's moved somewhere yeah. else. That's because they don't know. Secrets. Yeah. Unless you take it back apart. What they've done here, put a whole gang of steels in there. That's a no-no. I was gonna all, say they're all for spacers. It's just by looking in through the side, I could see that there wasn't a lot of clutches are in perfect shape. We've got three. three. That won't work with a trans brake. And then they did. They shimmed it up. I don't know why. They could have put three more fibers in there right and had what they needed fibers are 98 thousandths and the steels are 70 right so probably so if you got five steels there you could have done yeah, some this is definitely a no-no what I do see the pistons over here okay that's a reverse piston that's in that case right I turn them on a lathe and get them the thickness I want okay it's for the amount of clutches I want gotcha if they just stuck a skinny clutch in there and tried to make it up make it up with the as steel. best they could yeah. which they came close because it was just a little more clearance yeah so three clutches would not work on a trans brake yeah. she would roll forward on you you put trans brake on and floor it yeah it'd probably start going forward yeah. not backwards <laughs> not backwards <laughs> but forwards doesn't work either we need to stay still basically you need change the reverse piston put a thicker one in there put the right amount of clutches in reverse. The three clutches that are in there look good. Right. But you need, need, you need at least two more. Not a big deal. Yeah. So my, my question is with what you've seen and what we've got, I know you had talked about you had other ones, you had other trains that were closer. Like what, where do you think we should go? Should we build this one? The It's up to you. The input shaft, of course, is the same thing I use. Right. Everything else in there pretty much has got to be redone. Redone, yeah. Because the gear set, that definitely is not going to hold. And the clutches, the drum, that's all stock stuff. I guess the main thing would be what kind of gear set do you want to put in it. The 176, which will hold 750 horsepower, I've got three up there. Right. They're kind of hard to find. I had to buy some from Cone. Right. I, bought, I bought nine of them, $145 a piece. Mm -hmm. in their stock. If you find a power glide and it happens to have that, right. it's like in a big block or a, yeah. something like that. One in about 20 actually has will it. have that gear set. Well, I think... I and mean, a 180 straight cut, they're 800 bucks. Yeah. They're in that box. Two-year warranty against breakage. They guarantee them for two years and you can go 1,500 horsepower. That's where I'd like to be because I know we're going to... It's just a lot of money. I, I say a lot. Yeah, no, I mean... There's a 158 over there that belongs to Sal Patel. Yeah. That guy with the Viper. Yeah, I know so. That gear set's 3800 bucks. Ooh, I Jesus. Put, I put him in his car. That's getting a little wild. I can deal with 169 for $800, the same as the straight cut 180, but it's not that Sonex billet, right. whatever all that is. That's an extreme deal. You know, you need you need at least 2,000 horsepower to need that. Yeah, we're not going to be we're not gonna be The 180 straight cut will do pretty good, and... If you're blowing the tires off, that's the only reason to go to that high first gear. Yeah. I would rather see you come out with less boost and get her hooked up and then... Yeah. Well, we also, right now, we got a 373 gear in the car. That so should it, kill it pretty good. It does. It does. We, we got to hit it over the head pretty hard. Now here's think. the deal. It's not something we can do in five minutes and put back together. Yeah. Because it's going to need pretty yeah. much everything. My thing now is we were supposed to go race this weekend. We're not doing that. It's raining. And I think we're gonna to go to Florida for the week because they're doing the sick week drag and drive. So I think we're gonna go down there for a week and make videos. So I know, I would, my thing is, what do we have to do that when we come back that next week to be able to pick something up? Yeah, no problem. No problem. I'm just thinking, the one I have done with the 180 straight cut. Oh, this duns, this duns are on this side. Yeah. It's that one. Okay. That's got the 180 straight cut gear set. It's got the same shaft, the turbo shaft. All right. Uh, it's got the bushing and the pump. And it doesn't have a valve body or a pan or a shift lever. Yeah. So basically, that's all new. New clutches, the eight packs in that. Okay. It's basically what I would do to that. To that one, yeah. I'll do yours the same way. Yeah. If you don't care either way, I, I don't as care long as it's way. done whenever. Yeah, as long as one's done. I suggest the 180 straight cut. And I suggest a deep pan. Yep. So we got the extra fluid. 
you've already got the shaft and the valve body I don't know what kind of pressure it's got right you can't test it without it in the car running basically yeah. there's a fitting right here you pull that fitting out right start it up put it in low gear that's going to have whatever that valve body pressure is oh so you put a gauge on that yeah. you got to have a gauge that goes to 300. i used to have one and i loaned it out and it didn't come back yeah. i bought another one i loaned it out it didn't come back. Yeah. i've done it three times I'm tired not, of i don't buy anymore yeah. <laughs> and when i pull this out you'll have a servo which is a little piston with a ring on it and some people use dual ring servos Okay. for that purpose it, it, less likely to leak yeah when you're trying to do extreme pressure yeah and see these are stock brass ones i've never seen anybody ring tariff with the brass ones the brass thread the should case. strip before yeah. the case right that's yes. why they're brass yeah but when you buy brake lines they got steel ones yeah. and no 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 well that and just i i made the mistake a couple of years ago when i put I had an aluminum block LS, put the trans in with steel bolts, and it was like stuck. Oh yeah, it was a nightmare to get those things out again. Yeah, I I I made them. I'm not making that mistake again. So then like I'll, I said, probably the best thing to do would be use that one. Put your valve body deep pan and the shift lever, and I'll just trade you input shafts or just put, yeah. your, put yours in, take mine out. You're the same thing. Yeah, same thing. No matter. And that way would be the fastest. And then the only issue I would have would be the valve body. Right. And that's not an issue as long as it's got 200 pounds of pressure. Right. It'll work 150. Yeah. But it'll burn up. It'll burn up. So With, we'll... you know, a thousand horsepower. Yeah. So we'll have to check. Yeah. Only because I don't know what that is. Yeah. Or if you can do some research. I don't know. Now that you've taken it apart and explained it, I'm not saying I'm going to take it apart and never build one, but I don't you feel could, as bad about it anymore. You can do it. Yeah. Clearance is main thing. Well, I'll uh, we'll we'll roll up out of here and then just give me a give me a call. I mean, like I said, next week we're going to be in Florida, but you can call me, whatever. Let me know, and then that following okay. week we'll come pick something up. I thought I could maybe do it today, but we better we better wait. Yeah, I, because I'm I'm not I'm not in a rush, so I'd rather leave it and let you. I'll make my decision on I'd rather not just go ahead and do mine. Right. I mean, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. But if I got time, I like to do them and save them for when right. somebody calls. Oh, I need it for tomorrow. Right. Yeah. yeah. I can do it for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's why I got them done ahead. I've got one of everything pretty much. Yeah. Just I don't about. usually do many with 180s because they cost too much. Yeah. I don't really want them sitting over there for two years. <laughs> yeah, waiting for somebody to come get it. Sounds good, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Now, what kind of car is it? This one is a 74 Nova. Okay. And it's a hatchback. Oh. Yeah. Original uh, shocks on the hatch. It still works. Comes up. She had the big bumper. Yeah, big bumper. Oh. All right. Sounds good. All righty. I'll well, fix you up. We'll get it. And I'll give you a call. Leave a message if I can't get you. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll but come. That's what we'll do. 180 deep pan. Clutch pack. And a dipstick. Because I have no dipstick to use a dipstick. The locking it. sticks is what I usually put the long ones. Yeah. And it's got the lock on it. Yeah. You don't need a shorty or nothing because you won't be able to do it. No, because the, and especially mine, the motor is set back as far as we can go. So that right there where that dipstick tube is, the head practically touches the firewall. So I usually got to spin it a little bit okay. to get it in the right spot, but I've got it those works. low car ones too. You know the cable ones you put them yeah. anywhere. I got one of those. They're a pain in this. them, but yeah, I would rather use that a regular one than the low car one. If you can make her fit, that would be better. Yeah, yeah, we we can make it fit. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. Well, you guys, the technology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got enough hammers. Is it a hammer and a piece of pipe? Yeah. yeah. So, all right, sounds good. I've, got some, back I've got some that have already been done like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one we'll use. All right, man. All right, I'll see you guys. Have a good one. All right. All right. Well, today we got a pretty good power glide education. I feel a lot more confident in my understanding of the transmission and how it works. I mean, I've been talking to people over the years. I've been learning 
I've been figuring stuff out, but to actually see one come apart in front of me and talk about the different parts, you know, I knew about the clutches and the drums and everything, but to physically see it come apart, see how it works, and see why you can only fit so many clutches in a drum, you know, that kind of stuff. So, it makes me feel pretty good. I don't know, like I said, I don't know that I'm gonna start building power glide transmissions. I hear they're the easiest ones, so if you're gonna get started with it, the power glide is the easiest one to do. Maybe we will, will one day, like in a hot rod project or something, you know, maybe not thousand plus horsepower car, but something on like a 500 horsepower or something, maybe we could try it and figure it out. I don't know. Really, if we had a lift where I could pull the trains in and out without, you know, having to be on the ground. And, have and transmissions in, in the shop on the ground kind yeah. of sucks. So. So maybe one day we'll get a lift. I'll start building transmissions because I know I know they're gonna come in and out. Bad habit transmissions seems like a good guy. Came really highly recommended by a lot of local drag racers, drag racers in the area that I know. They said, hey, if you're if you're gonna do a power glide, this is the man to go to. You know, he seems to have his knowledge. And he's pretty knowledgeable and has all the parts there. That was the big thing. Was like, he's got it right there. You know, there's no. I drop it off and then we gotta wait and then we gotta order parts and this that and the other like if he needs something it's right there on those shelves it's done so we're gonna head off to sick week and then when we come back we'll pick up our trains and then we'll work on putting the nova back together sounds like a plan to me